Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for the record, my name is Sarah Gelser. I'm a state senator from Senate District 8, which is the Corvallis and Albany area. I chair the Senate Committee on Human Services and for the last several years have really been focused on access to services for adolescents and particularly the experience of children and youth when they are in the care of facilities. I know there are others that are going to speak to their concerns about the certificate of need and I do acknowledge we have significant needs in our mental health system in Oregon. But I do not believe that bringing another United Health Services um, system to Oregon is in the best interest <clears throat> of Oregon, and certainly not in the best interests of the 25 um, adolescents that might be in those beds. The first point that I would make is that in their own materials, uh, this organization references Provo Canyon School in Utah. I actually was at uh, Provo Canyon last week meeting with uh, residents and community members and individuals who had survived their time at Provo Canyon School. There have been in the last uh, two years over 31 critical incidents at Provo Canyon School, which is a UHS inpatient facility for youth. Uh, and there have been a number just within the last handful of months. I'd like to mention a couple of them. Um, there was video footage of staff uh, punching students. Uh, there was a youth found hanging from a noose access to medical care was delayed for that student. Uh, frequent written complaints to licensing from staff about understaffing. Um, students uh, reporting that they were being physically and emotionally abused. One student in general, uh, in particular, noted that staff had pinched her, pulled her hair, twisted her wrists, pushed her to the floor harshly, threatened her, and made comments about her looks that negatively impacted her self-esteem. Um, there was a staff member that reported about patients being forced by maintenance to clean up sewage after both bathrooms and the hallways were flooded with poop water and toilet paper. Um, staff wrote about being urged to lie to the state regarding their ratios. There was another single day in which there were 16 restraints of youth and a staff member reported that she was most concerned about 12 year olds placed on units with sexually acting out 17 to 18 year olds. There was another student who was grabbed by the shirt, placed in a supine position and pressed his back and legs were pressed into the ground in order to comp um, obtain compliance. Now, those are kids that are not necessarily from Utah because like Cedar Hills, many of the kids at Provo Canyon School come from states that are not Utah. One of those children was an Oregon youth, a 14 year old in the Oregon foster care system uh, that had an intellectual disability. I accessed the public records about her. Um, she was only at the facility for a handful of months. And during that three month period, this 14 year old foster child with an intellectual disability from Oregon in the care of United Health Services at Provo Canyon School, which is cited as a successful program in the applications, experienced 42 inc incidents of assault by a peer, physical or chemical restraint and seclusion in a three month period. Again, 42 separate instances of assault, physical restraint, chemical restraint and seclusion via public records. Prior to this, UHS insisted that they did not use seclusion. And this was in response to Paris Hilton telling her story about being served at Provo Canyon School. They said new management. However, I obtained these public records. This happened about 18 months ago. So this is current, current practice. We should not be trusting any further Oregon youth to this program, to a facility operated by this organization, and we should not be inviting children into our state from other places to have this treatment. Finally, we have significant needs in our mental health system, especially as it leads to as it um, relates to adolescents. This does not solve that problem. This is not the whole that we have. We need a facilities and services for our adolescent aid and assist program. We need step down programs. We need community services. We need uh, intensive family supports and respite. That is where we should be investing our time and energy. This proposal does nothing to address those needs. I strongly urge you to reject this proposal and to absolutely reject allowing any other child to ever be subject to the care of this organization. They have showed us that they cannot be trusted to do so safely. And we have our own youth and our own public records to demonstrate that. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gelser.